Contacts and Connectors in Fixer Partial Denture Pondic is derived from the Latin word pons meaning bridge. Pontic is an artificial tooth on a fixed partial denture that replaces a missing natural tooth, restores its function and usually restores the space previously occupied by the clinical crown. History Early civilization used artificial teeth from one mouth to another by ligature. Chinese used teeth of ivory with copper wire in ancient days and later it was used in Europe. Pierre Foucher used tenons which were doubled screwed into the roots to retain the bridges. Prerequisites of a pontic is that it should restore the function, it must provide aesthetics and comfort, it should be biologically acceptable, it should permit effective oral hygiene and it must preserve the underlying residual mucosa. The pretreatment considerations there are mainly three. One is the pontic space, second is the residual bridge contour, and third is the gingival architecture. Pontic space. If an FPD is placed, it will prevent tilting or drifting of the adjacent teeth into the edangular space. If such a movement has already occurred, pontic space will be reduced and its fabrication will be complicated. Seabirth has classified residual bridge into class 1, class 2 and class 3. So what are the surgical modifications that we can do in each defect? In class 1 defect, soft tissue procedures are advocated to increase the ridge height. Class 2 and 3 defects, two procedures are done to increase the ridge height and width of the interpositional graft and downlay graft. The role technique is for soft tissue ridge augmentation. In this epithelium is removed from the palatal surface and the flap is elevated and a pouch will be created on the vestibular surface. Then onto the pouch the flap is rolled and thus it will enhance the ridge width. This is the pouch technique for orange augmentation. A split thickness graft is reflected and graft material placed on the pouch. It will increase the ridge width. After that, the flap is sutured into its original position. An interpositional graft. In this procedure, the tissue is first reflected and the interpositional graft will be positioned and sutured in place. Another method for bridge augmentation is only graft. In this recipient bed is prepared by removing the epithelium, then striation cuts are made in the connective tissue to encourage revascularization. After that, only graft will be sutured in place. Picture preservation. Although resorption following extraction is unpredictable, it should be minimized by immediate restoration and periodontal intervention. If soon after extraction, if a provisional FPD is inserted, it will preserve the gingival architecture. Biological, mechanical and aesthetic considerations for a successful pontic design. 
The biology considerations include cleansable tissue surface, access to abdomen teeth, no pressure on the ridge. The mechanical considerations include it should be rigid to resist the deformation, strong connectors should be present to prevent the fracture, metal ceramic framework must resist the poser line fracture. Then the aesthetic considerations are that it should look like a tooth. Coming to the biological consideration, tonic rich contact, a pressure free contact must be present. If a pressure is present, it will lead to ulceration of the gingival tissue. Then oral hygiene considerations. Simulating contours or concavity such as sleeves, waist and embrasures. Physiologic tooth contouring permits cleaning and massaging action of following. The patient must be instructed to clean the pontic space. Pontic material. Any material chosen to fabricate the pontic must provide good aesthetic results, biocompatibility, longevity. Occlusal forces. Parafunctional forces are not reduced by narrowing the occlusal table. Pontics with normal occlusal widths are recommended. If the residual ridge has collapsed, reducing pontic width may facilitate plaque control measures. Mechanical considerations. The pontics must be rigid to avoid the movement during mastication of parafunction. A closer contact should not fall on the connector joints. Any sharp angles present should be rounded or provide uniform veneer of poser line. Aesthetic considerations mainly three that is gingival interface, mesodistal width and incisor gingival length. The space available for pontic is less than it should be orthodontically corrected. The pontic design classification mainly two categories mucosal conduct and non mucosal conduct. In mucosal conduct comes the ridge lap, modified ridge lap, conical, and ovate. And non mucosal conduct includes sanitary and modified sanitary pontic. Materials used in constructing the pontics. Pontics are classified as all metal. All ceramic metals and porcelain metals and resins and reinforced composite. Coming to the pontic designs in details. First one is saddle pontic. It's also called as rich lab pontic. It looks mostly like a tooth replacing all the condos of the missing teeth. It forms a large concave contact with the ridge. Tissue surface is usually concave. Ridge lap. In this type of pontic, the pontic surface is adapted to only the facial or buccal aspect of the residual ridge. And this helps in the ease of cleaning. Lingual surface should have a slight deflective contour to prevent food impaction and minimize plaque accumulation. Ovate pontic. It was introduced by Dewey and Sucksmith in 1933. Usually it is indicated in areas where aesthetic is of prime concern. Partially submerged in a surgically prepared soft tissue depression to enhance the illusion of a tooth emerging from the gingival tissue. The tissue contacting segment is bluntly rounded and set into a concavity in the ridge. Advantages include superior aesthetics due to the mimicked papillary form which is usually lost post extraction due to bone deterioration and disadvantages that it requires a wide dry ridge to perform possibly indicated ridge augmentation surgery. Conical pondic, it is also called as egg shaped or bullet shaped or heart shaped pondic. In this type of pondic it has only one point contact at the center of the residual ridge. 
It's usually indicated in posterior area where aesthetic is of minimal importance such as mandibular posterior area. It is contraindicated in areas where aesthetics is required. The materials used are metal and metal ceramic. Advantage is the increased hygiene access to the buccal and lingual surfaces. Disadvantage is the decreased aesthetics due to the lack of contour. Sanitary pondic, it's also called as hygienic pondic. In this type of pondic, there is no contact with the ridge and it is placed about 2 to 3 mm above the ridge mucosa. It's easier to clean. The types of hygienic pondic, there are mainly two types fish belly and peril pontic or arc fix pontic. It's usually indicated in posterior area where aesthetic is of minimal importance such as badibula posterior area. Contraindicated in areas where aesthetics is required such as maxillary anterior region. Sanitary pondic is usually recommended in the posterior region. Advantage is the good oral hygiene and disadvantage poor aesthetic. Saddle pontics are not recommended. Conical pontics are usually used in molars without aesthetic requirements. It's good oral hygiene is its advantage and disadvantage is the poor aesthetics. Modified ridge lap is usually used in highly aesthetic areas such as anteriors and premolars. Advantage is the good aesthetics and disadvantage is the difficult in cleaning. Then is the ovid pontic. It's usually recommended in maxillary incisors, cuspids and premolar region. Advantages to superior aesthetics, ease of cleaning and disadvantages that it requires a surgical preparation. Then discussing about the modifications in pondic design. First one is the split pondic. It is usually used in tilted abutment cases. And in this type of pondic, the attachment is placed entirely within the pondic. Next is a cross pin and wing pondic. It's used in abutment teeth with Disparate long axis. It's a two piece pondic system. The wing extension is about 1 mm thick facial lingually. It is 1 mm short of the occlusal surface and 3 mm mesially from the distal retainer. Hollow pondic, short and which man in 1983 introduced this. Here the concavities are placed on the external surface of the framework. Advantage is the reduced weight of the casting. Next is the Inzoma Pondic. It's a reinforced porcelain system. It uses lesser metal and it imparts a greater strength. It consists of thimble coppings with shells, belts and blades. Metal extensions enhances the porcelain fracture resistance. Next is the connectors. The connectors are defined as the portion of a fixed partial denture that unites the retainer and the pondix. Mainly two types, rigid and non-rigid. Rigid connectors include cast connectors, loop connectors and soldered connectors. And the non-rigid include dovetail connectors, split connectors and cross pin and wing connectors. Requirements of the connectors is that it should be sufficiently strong, electrical in close section. Its placement is that in anteriors it should be placed as lingually and incisally as possible and in posteriors as much in occlusal third as possible. The depth should be sufficient to provide adequate strength. It should occupy a width of 0.25 mm. And optimal preparation should be done to preserve the interproximal areas. Rigid connectors are connectors that doesn't allow any movement. Connectors, they are waxed into the final shape and then sectioned with a ribbon saw. When the components are cast, surfaces to be joined up flat, parallel and a controlled distance apart. Loop connectors, they are usually given in areas where diastema is to be maintained. It's usually rarely used. And in this type, a loop on the lingual aspect is of the prosthesis is given, which connects the retainers and the pondix. Non-rigid connectors are connectors that permit limited movement between the otherwise independent members of the FIDI.
the non rigid connectors could be made by an incorporation of pre fabricated inserts by use of a custom milling machine or by use of the pre fabricated plastic patterns types of non rigid connectors dowel connectors cross pin and wing connectors and split connectors the split connectors are useful in tilted abutment cases tenon or male component is attached to the pontic and mortis or the female component is prepared within the conduits of the retainer the limiting factors are the abutments having a large pulpal size and abutments with reduced clinical crown height indications of non rigid connectors are in where a pair abutment is present then in case of existence of mal aligned abutment then long span of pd etc soldering soldering is the process in which two or more metal items are joined together by melting and flowing a filler metal into the joint the filler metal having a relatively low melting point classification according to hardness that classified as soft solders and hard solders and jalango has classified the solders as group 1 that is the traditional gold containing alloys and group 2 special solders for example pre ceramic solders so the requirements of a solder include ease of flow at relatively low temperature strength compatibility resistance to tarnish and corrosion soldering flux it is usually applied to a metal surface to remove oxides or to prevent their formation commonly used fluxes are borax and hydrochloric acid soldering anti flux is usually used to limit the spread of solder for examples include graphite the types of soldering first one is a taut soldering various gases used are hydrogen natural gas acetylene propane reducing portion of the flame is usually used next is the oven soldering the solder is placed at the joint space and casting and solder are heated simultaneously and the disadvantage is that it doesn't allow the moment of solder fusion to be observed laser welding in this type of welding laser energy is used the speed is made with this type of welding have greater strength and better corrosion resistance coming to soldering techniques mainly two types post ceramic soldering and pre ceramic soldering pre ceramic soldering is done before the ceramic application advantage is that it allows trial in unglazed state post ceramic soldering the soldering is done after the ceramic application advantage is that it is more natural sagging is not a problem performed in porcelain furnace thank you